Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And today we're going to be taking a look at making Particle Man here. So it's quite a fancy looking effect, but the project is not that hard to set up. So let's have a go. So here we are in the default Blender scene. We're going to select our cube and we're going to click on the Geometry Nodes layout. And then we're going to click on New to create a new Geometry Nodes flow. I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping here just to make life a little bit easier. Right click here, Join Areas and point up to that one. It will just make it easier for you to see what's going on. So what we're going to do with this cube is we're going to turn it into a volume. So to do that, I'm going to hit Shift A and S to bring up the search. And I'm going to do Mesh to and select Mesh to Volume. And I'm going to drop it in there. And you can see that our cube has now become this nice foggy volume. But this is only a sort of intermediate step because what we actually want to do is turn that volume into points. So again, Shift A and S, and we're going to look for Distribute Points in Volume. And then we're going to drop it into there. It's going to set both of these bandwidths to zero. And I'm going to just crank up the density so you can see what it's looking like. Crank up the density here as well. So these points have been randomly distributed within the cube area. So what we can then do is we can swap out this cube for our character. So I'm going to come to File and Import and FBX to navigate to my Assets folder and bring in this asset. So I downloaded this character and his animation from Adobe's amazing Mixamo website. And I'll give you the link to that in the description. I just thought this dance move would be a particularly nice way of showing off this technique. So we want to deselect him and reselect our cube. And then we want to add in here an object info node. And we want to set this to relative. And from the drop down menu, we want to select alpha surface, which is the surface of that character. And then pipe this geometry into the mesh. And now, if we run our simulation, you can see that we've actually got our points inside the volume of the character. I'm going to increase this density up to 750 so you can see more of what it's like. So he's looking sort of a bit like a Michelin man there, but you get the general idea. I'm going to set this mesh to volume down to 50. Maybe let's just decrease that density just while we work. We are going to bring it back up to 750 later on. So to run the simulation, we come to the first frame and we hit play and you'll notice it stops here. And that's because we need to come to our character and we need to loop him. So if we come to the armature there, which is what we brought in and select the armature and then we come to, for example, animation and it brings up the dope sheet there. And if we right click on the armature, extrapolation mode and choose make cyclic. And what that's going to do, as you see after the end, it's just going to cut and loop, and loop his, his little dance. So let's reselect the cube. Let's come back into geometry nodes. And you'll see now that he's, he's carrying on dancing all the way through. Actually, let's just disable that uh, armature. It's rather annoying, isn't it, seeing that? So here with the armature, just disable that in the viewport and disable its renderability as well. We, we don't want to be able to be rendering that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a simulation zone. Simulation zone. And what we're going to do is in this simulation zone, we're going to add a join geometry. Join geometry, drop it into there. And then let's come back to the first frame. This is probably quite important. We're going to take our distribute points in volume there, add it to the join geometry. And then we're going to take the simulation output into the geometry nodes output like that. We're not going to see anything initially, uh, and that's fine. Make sure you're just parked on frame one and don't try to play this at this point, because what we actually need to do is to manage the life of the points. So we're going to add a store named attribute node, drop it into there just after the simulation input. 
Then we're going to add a named attribute and we're going to add a math node. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the named attribute, attribute output, add it to that value there, set this value to one. So we're going to be adding one and then we're going to take that value output into the store named attribute value input. And then what we need to do is give this a name and the name I'm going to give it is life and then making sure to spell it exactly the same way, I'm going to put life into there as well. So now we've stored the life of the particles and we can use that to tidy things up. So I'm just going to make a bit of space here. After that join geometry, I'm going to add a delete geometry. And this is going to allow us to kill the particles after a certain amount of life. So I'm going to take that named attribute Shift D to duplicate it. Duplicate that math node as well, Shift D. I'm going to set the math node to greater than, and I'm going to set that threshold to 84. So I'm going to take the life into the value there, take the output of the greater than node into this selection switch here. And what that means is that after 84 frames of life, the particles are going to be killed off. So it's all looking pretty ugly at the moment, as you can see, but you can, you can already get a feel for how this is going to work. So the other thing we want to do is we want to control the size of those points. To do that, we're going to add a set point radius, drop it into here. And then we're going to take our named attribute. We don't need to duplicate it, actually. We can just borrow it from its neighbor here. And we're going to add a map range node. And we're going to take the attribute, which is the life, bring it into that value there. And we're going to set the minimum and maximum as follows. Minimum from is going to be six, and the maximum is going to be 84. So this is the life over which the particles are going to shrink down. And I'm going to set the two minimum to 0 0.001, and the two max to zero. And then we can take this output into the set point radius like that. And then if we come back to the start and run our simulation, you can see our points are kind of shrinking away over life. So that's a lot better. Now, to get this to look really nice, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some noise. So I'm going to add a set position node, drop that in here and then add a noise texture. And this is going to do the magic. So what I need to do with a noise texture is normalize it so it's not going from zero to one, which is its normal output. It's actually going from negative 0.5 to plus 0.5. So to do that, we can just add a vector math node. We can take the color output into the top slot there and then use the Alt key and swipe down over those values there, we can add negative 0.5. Or we could have set this to subtract and added 0.5, but the difference is the same. And then we could take that output into this set position offset. And then let's come back to the start and press play. And you can see our points kind of flying around in a much more random way now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the detail down to zero and the roughness down to zero here on that noise texture. Let's also just reduce the scale. So I'm going to go with one. And let's have a look at that. And now you see we get these really nice sort of swirls like that. And we're much closer to the, the effect that we want. The other thing we need to do is we need to scale this down a bit. After that add node, we're going to add another vector math node, drop that in there. And we're going to set this to scale and it scales the entire vector, and let's scale it down to 0.2. And now run the simulation again, coming back to the start, and you can see that this is already looking really nice, I think. Let's just actually up the number of points. Let's come back to the beginning. I said we'd increase the density of this uh, distributed points in volume. Let's go up to 750. Let's run that simulation again, much nicer. The one thing you might want to play with is this scale value. I think I've, I've gone with one, but uh, let's actually have a look at two, just so you see if you like that better. You'll see where you're getting a sort of more wispy result. You might actually prefer that. I think I'm gonna go back to, to one, however, for that. So 
really all that we need to do now is we need to add a material. So let's come to the end here. Let's add a set material node and drop it into there. And let's, from this menu, select the thing called material, which is obviously the default material for the project. And let's come over to the shading tab. And what I want to do is I want to affect the emission color. So first of all, I'm going to add a color ramp and I'm just going to set up these colors very quickly. So you can choose any colors you want really. It's just one color for the start of their life and another for the end. So now what we need to do is add the life attribute from geometry nodes. So we can do that by adding an attribute node and then we can type in that name field life which was the name that we gave to our attribute. And then we can add a map range node. And with this, we can map the life to this color ramp. So let's take the fac output out of the attribute and add it to that value input. Let's take the result out of the map range into this fac input. Let's take that color into the emission. And so let's just set up the from min to max. So zero is good for the min, and I'm going to go with 64 for the max. And now at the moment, we're not going to be able to see anything. So if I press render, we've just got our character with no particles. So what we actually need to do is come over here and switch to cycles. And what I'm going to do is just reduce those samples down to, those render samples down to 16. So now if we render it, you'll see we've got our character and those nice swirling particles like that. And what I also want to do is I want to turn up the emission strength to eight. And let's have a look at that. And hopefully you can see what's actually happening is that our character is actually being illuminated by the particles. And that is a really nice effect. So what I'm actually also going to do is just make the world black. So come over here to the world, frame everything up and set this background color to black. So now when we render it, we're rendering against black, it's much more dramatic. And the other thing I think we want to do is we want to add in a nice shiny floor. So let's come over to layout perhaps and add in mesh plane. And let's just come over here, increase the size to something like 30 and come over to shading, come back to object, new. Let's set the base color down to Sort of pretty much black, reduce the roughness a lot and increase the specular probably. So then let's set up our camera, come over to the camera, backspace on the location, backspace on the rotation. I want negative six for the Y and one for the Z location and 90 degrees for the X rotation. And then if we render, we're looking at something like that. Now you'll notice that we're not getting our full particle effect here, and that's because we need to actually run the simulation again so we get to where we want to be. So select the cube, and if we come down to physics, you'll notice we've got a simulation nodes option here. And what we can do is we can hit calculate to frame, and that'll calculate the simulation up to the frame we're currently on. And then if we hit render, we get something that looks pretty spectacular, I think. And the only other thing I did was I actually gave my character a little bit more of an interesting material. So if we come back to shading and from the material dropdown, let's select alpha body matte, which is the character's material. Let's set that base color to be a kind of a dark gray. And let's reduce the roughness quite a lot. And the specular as well. And let's have a look at how that looks. And he's probably looking better like that. So just going back here for a, for a second, before you try to render this as an animation, do make sure that you bake the entire animation because it's going to drop frames if you don't. So hit hit the bake button and clear any pre-existing pre bakes if you've got them. So quite a simple project to set up, but I think the result is pretty spectacular. So uh, thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again soon.